tomorrow so he says remember ye not the former things the first instruction here and that is my first admonishment to us this morning is that overdwelling in the past whether positively or negatively can hinder advancement and progress overdwelling in the past it doesn't have to be negative overdwelling in the past is a cancer to progress a cancer to advancement hallelujah when you dwell on the negative past it is able to create discouragement fear and it will even deflate your passion listen when you dwell in yesterday and all the negative occurrences and the negative experiences that came with yesterday among the many things that it can do to you is number one it will plant fear are we together now fear of the future fear of today number two it sustains the ability to bring discouragement 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 and number three it can deflate your passion you need passion to press forward to push against the vicissitudes of life so the prophet is giving us an instruction he says remember ye not the former things former pain former disappointment former mistakes are we together now yes and you see the past has a voice it always seeks to relieve itself in your today are we together it is a reason why you can remember something that happened 30 years ago 20 years ago and begin to cry a current tears are we together now yes you can watch a movie that has been acted five ten years ago and cry as though it were happening now the past always seeks to relieve itself in your today it is your responsibility and by this instruction to remember not that is a statement that demands responsibility so there is the negative past that can bring fear to remember means to bring to memory to remember means to make alive again are we together now remember ye not the former things the former past because it creates fear it creates discouragement and it deflates your passion to press but the former the positive past can also create complacency can create pride and overconfidence it can even create indiscipline are we together now so over dwelling on both the negative and the positive past can affect you i take it again that the positive past when you overdwell there it can create complacency it can create pride there are people who their own becoming is that they succeeded yesterday that was the worst thing that happened to them their success of yesterday so beclouded them that today and tomorrow came and they did not have the passion to succeed again i built a house yesterday i healed the sick yesterday i prayed in tongues yesterday i raised the dead yesterday he said remember ye not the former things there are many many people who are not able to do great things because their yesterday beclouded them whether your yesterday was positive or negative over dwelling on it this is why god never put the human eye at the back because it does not expect you to concentrate facing backward are we together if you want to turn with your eyes back your whole body must turn back here's what apostle paul had to say philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 is god speaking to us already Philippians 3 13 and 14 this is a very powerful lesson that I learned years ago it says brethren I count myself to have apprehend not to I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing say one thing one more time say one thing but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before it says verse 14 i press i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of god in jesus christ 
I remember I prayed a prayer many years ago and I told the Lord, I said, Father, may I never know the extent of my impact so that it does not affect my focus and affect my advancement. To know that I have the privilege of blessing lives across the nations is enough for me. There are many of us who have the itch to reminisce and continue to review the past, not so that we can strategize for the future. Many of us continue to flatter ourselves around little results, spiritual results, financial results, career results, and you find that we are not able to make progress. And beware of people who clap for you too much and stop you from moving forward. There are people who clap for you even when you have not done much. Great men know how to shut their ears so that they are able to make maximum progress. There was a story that was told about someone who was about to climb, um, you know, to climb a very high tower. And whilst the person was climbing, there were two groups of people on the ground. And some of them were clapping for him and encouraging him. And some were saying, you better stop and come down. Two groups, all on the ground. He was climbing. It was quite an impossible feat, but he kept moving. And some were clapping for him to come down. Some were clapping to notify him to continue. And the man kept clapping and they found out that he, he did not seem to secure their attention. When he got to the top, you know, someone came and motioned and was talking to him and he could not reply the person. Eventually, they found out that the man was deaf. That was the reason he was able to climb. So those clapping for him, he could not hear them. Those discouraging him, he could not hear them. One thing that was his focus was that he was going up and nothing would change his mind. If he had the ears to hear those clapping for him, pride will make him to even leave the ladder and come down. If he heard those who discourage him, maybe complacency and fear would make him to not be able to continue. The applauds of men and their discouragement can affect you all the same. Is someone learning so the first instruction is remember ye not he's not saying to not celebrate the past he's saying over dwelling on the past whether positively or negatively can affect an individual if you're with me say amen, amen. this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press I press I press I press hallelujah the second instruction is found in verse 19. Please give it to us, Isaiah 43 and verse 19. Isaiah 43 and verse 19. It says, behold. The word behold is a very interesting word. The word behold means be sensitive. The word behold means see. The word behold means conceive in your spirit what I'm about to say. Are we together now? So when he says, behold, let me have your attention, he says. Remember ye not the former things, the first instruction. Second instruction is behold. You're not going to understand and benefit from what I'm about to say when you are distracted. I need your focus. I need your discernment. Did that not happen to the man at Gate Beautiful? The Bible says Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer. Then they met this man who was crippled from birth. And then he said, look on us. And the Bible says he looked at them, giving them his rapt attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He needed his attention. So when the Bible says, behold, he's saying, take your eyes away from the things that are distracting you and focus. Martha and Mary were two people who demonstrated the power of focus or otherwise. So Jesus is teaching and he's having a session with his people as his custom was. And the Bible talks about Martha who ran up and down trying to do so many things. And she was angry that the women were not there to help her. And Mary was seated at the feet of Jesus. Jesus replies Martha and he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and you are upset about many things. He says one thing is needful. And this one thing Mary has chosen. One thing, not many things. One thing is needful to sit at the master's feet. So when he says, behold, he said, listen, you are giving all kinds of things your attention. Focus on Jesus. Focus on that which is about to come. Are we together? Yes. 
there are so many things that clamor for our attention social media has his voice and clamoring for attention men have their voices all kinds of things the bible's speaking paul was speaking and he said there is as it were many voices and he says none of them is without signification we live in a world today where we are immersed in so many voices all kinds of things bringing different opinions to you culture has its voice failure has its voice men have their voices technology has its voice one thing is needful so when he says behold let me have your attention finally so that i'm able to reveal to you that which i desire to do is someone listening behold see conceive contemplate on this in your spirit now the third instruction or down this comes as a prophetic word it says i will do not just i will say not just i will think i will do a new thing I will do a new thing I will do a new thing do you know what that means it is important to know where God is moving because where God is moving is where his power is moving where God is moving is where his anointing is moving it is a dangerous thing to be where God was and not know what he is doing now he says I will do I am moving I am acting and then he says a new thing now pay attention please what is the implication of this statement i wrote here when god says i will do a new thing that means there is a performance about to happen that means there is a wave of the spirit that means there is something in the mind of the spirit per season and per time sometimes it is an unfamiliar performance when we talk of something new it means something that may have never occurred again please listen carefully every time new things are about to come whether in the spirit or in life and destiny they demand a certain levels of understanding it says behold i will do a new thing he never said behold i am acting a new thing the emphasis is new are we together please write this down i wrote here that experiencing a new dimension of god a new dimension of the move of god a new dimension a new leaf a new page in life and destiny generally demands two things and this will be the apex of my teaching this morning and then we're done so he says i will do a new thing a performance i am moving i have a reason already experiencing the new demands number one discernment and flexibility please write it down discernment and flexibility when god talks about a new thing it means it is an unfamiliar performance it is an unfamiliar pathway you're going to be following that requires discernment it requires flexibility Two stories very quickly in scripture for our understanding. Luke chapter 1 and from verse 26. Luke 1, 26. So this is a young virgin, a young lady espoused to a man called Joseph, preparing for her wedding like every young lady would, happily planning her marriage, and then something disrupts her life that will be a disruption forever the bible says in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent from god unto the city of galilee named nazareth reading to 38 a long reading please pay attention to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was joseph of the house of david and the virgin's name was mary 28 and the angel came to her and said hail thou that art highly favored the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women when she saw him the angel now she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation should this be in other words this has never happened to me in this fashion and the angel said unto her fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son you shall call his name jesus 32 he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father david 
he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and his kingdom shall be of no end 34 the bible says mary said unto the angel how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man just hang on here before we continue so the bible says i do a new thing here is a young virgin who is having a very disturbing salutation from an angel and now he tells her that you are going to be with child and yet without a man and she's saying this but there are times you will need to walk on water when it is time to walk on water and you are waiting for the water to part you may remain there forever the same person who parted the sea is the same person who walked on water and even empowered peter to walk on water you must know when to walk on water and you must know when to watch it part waiting on the god that parts the sea alone will keep you there as a victim forever because there are times that god will not decide to part the waters there are times that that God can bring deliverance for you but there are times that you will still enter the lion's den and he will protect you there you will still be in the midst of the fire and he will protect you there flexibility and discernment are we together the Bible says the Lord will deliver you from every evil attack that is a strategy that he has invented for the victory of the saints. But there are times where the Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, are we together now? They comfort me. It says, Thou preparest a table for me in the midst, not the absence of my enemies. The most important thing for the believer is to discern what is God doing now what is god doing now how is he moving now hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through the prophets had in these last days the bible says spoken to us through his son through his son whom he had appointed let's continue it says whom he had appointed to be heir of all things he spoke to us in time past using a strategy but he's now designed to use his son it is the reason why the scribes and the pharisees had a problem with jesus because jesus disrupted order he disrupted the way they knew things to be for instance in john chapter 5 the bible talks about a man who had been at a pool called bethesda that once a year an angel would come and steer the water and whoever was the first to move in would be healed that was how they knew healing to happen yet jesus came with another way to heal he said you do not have to wait on that water rise up and be healed discernment and flexibility i know that god increases people by blessing the works of their hands and god commands that we be diligent but do you know that God can put it in the heart of a man to come and bless you and raise you in one day because of the peculiarity of the pain that you've gone through is called favor are we together that in one day slaves of 430 years were given gold and all of these things but the purpose was that they would go and build the tabernacle in the wilderness so if the only one you know is the God who prospers the work of your hands, you may never experience the God. Listen, God can cause abundance to your farm, but he can give you manna too in one day. It is still the same God. Is someone learning now? The challenge is that most times, because of the way that we have worked with God or we are used to God working with us, we peg ourselves around a formula and a strategy and we're not flexible enough to say god however you want to do it to you be all the glory chances are excellent that when we say god bless you your mind goes straight to an uncle somewhere or some business person you are related with you are saying amen but your amen is not genuinely by faith your amen is connected to someone you are aware of and yet in his wisdom he wants strangers to be the ones who bless you because there is a statement that he wants you to know that he is god all by himself and he can make even a fish to bring coin if god asks you to go and look for money will you go and bring it from the mouth of a fish the diversities that are in God already tells you that you need flexibility. Just because God is not moving the way he moved 10 years ago does not mean he's not the one moving. Are we together? Yeah. 
flexibility and discernment flexibility and discernment who would have known 20 years ago that the world will be the way it is now in terms of technological advancement hallelujah and there are people sadly who found it difficult to adjust to the changing times and sadly to their detriment there are businesses there are companies there are technological products that packed up because they did not have the ability to be flexible listen even in the communication of the gospel there's no time for us to discuss this i would have shown you in mark mark's account of the great commission jesus said in fact let's look at it mark 16 15 is god speaking to someone this morning mark 16 15 watch this he says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature please leave that statement there just go to verse 15 keep it there and let me explain something this is particularly for our missionaries who are here i understand that they are missionaries who are here jesus told us what to do go ye take action he told us where to go all the world he told us what to do preach he told us the message the gospel but he never told us how he left the strategy flexible because of the changing times are you seeing that the action remains the same the mission field remains the same the assignment remains the same the people to reach remains the same the message will never change but how it will be communicated he left it to be flexible behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing i am going to bless you but not the way you know it to be i am going to anoint you but not the way you know it to be are we together behold i do a new thing demands flexibility and discernment number two very quickly and then we pray experiencing a new thing a new dimension from god a new move will demand obedience the second demand obedience be willing to receive instructions and to honor them especially prophetic instructions the prophetic always heralds new seasons this is how god operates that every time a new season befalls you a prophetic instruction will come there is always something that he demands to be done to bring you into the new just because prophetically God desires to open up a new season listen to me when Jesus was about to become I mean to start his ministry now he needed to encounter this prophet called John the Baptist hallelujah and when he came to john he had never been baptized john sees him and says behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world and then he comes to john to be baptized and john says i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes and jesus says suffer it to be so that all scripture be fulfilled is someone learning you must be willing to receive prophetic instructions please listen to me you will never enter the new that god is doing if you do not know how to discern to receive and to honor prophetic instructions let me show you three stories and then we'll pray you will never see more of god more of his hand more of his grace when you are not prepared to receive prophetic instructions and to act on it My, um, john chapter 2 the wedding in Cana of Galilee. We'll begin our reading from verse 5. The Bible tells us that there was a feast in Cana of Galilee. And wine had finished. Can you imagine that wine is finished in a wedding? Embarrassment was imminent. And a few people came and met Mary, the mother of Jesus. And said, what do we do about this situation now? And the Bible records that she went to Jesus. And Jesus said, woman why have you come to disturb me it is not yet my time and mary made a very instructive statement let's read together if you can see it. ready one to read his mother said unto his servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it not think it not argue it not wish it there is timing to the move of god you can you can abort the move of god through complacency and the delay to act are we together 
whatsoever he tells you to do do now the bible says he told them fill six pots with water what a risk and then he says once you fill them fetch it don't taste it don't verify if it has become wine be on your way to the rulers in those days they didn't forgive they didn't pardon they killed immediately you can imagine their lives were on the line but that was the price for the new and the bible says while they moved a miracle happened not before not during while they moved and when they got to the rulers the rulers said what have you done to us that people bring their best wine at the first time and you have hidden this one till we drank all kinds of things and now you have brought the best imagine the honor that came upon those women those men you would recommend them for every other wedding and say these men have a way of bringing a very good wine their lives changed overnight because they were willing to obey prophetic instructions is someone learning willing to obey willing to obey willing to obey one time they had toiled all night the disciples and did not have any catch it was such a frustrating thing and jesus told them he says cast your net he said master we have toiled all night you find that in i think luke 5 from verse 4 and 5 there about it says nevertheless at thy word nevertheless at thy word now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught verse 5 simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless someone say nevertheless <laughs> nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net verse 6 the bible now says when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their nets break behold i do a new thing in your ministry a new thing in your family a new thing in your spiritual life a new thing in your finances a new thing but it will demand flexibility you don't choose how god moves in your life he's lord all by himself your assignment is to submit to the method that he decides to use as far as his wisdom is concerned hallelujah one last point and then we'll pray is god helping us this morning I want us to avoid a very serious tragedy that happened in the book of Acts where people because they are not familiar and they do not have discernment and they are not attentive to the things of God they can miss the things that they so greatly desire let me show you something that happened in Acts chapter 12 and then we'll wrap up for this morning Acts chapter 12 the Bible says Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and in doing so he killed James the brother of John and when he saw that it pleased the Jews he now held Peter please pay attention planning that after um, the feast of the unliving bread that he was now going to apprehend Peter are we together Peter was kept in prison verse 4 says under quaternion four quaternion of soldiers to keep him that after Easter he will bring him forth to the people verse 5 let's read together it says Peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him so the church was praying father in the name of jesus we will not let what happened to james happen to, to peter now we are praying that you will deliver him in answer to their prayer watch what happened the bible says that night bound hand and chain the bible says next verse please verse seven it says an angel of the lord came in response to their prayer and smote peter by the side and told peter stand up let's walk together let's go now jump to verse 10 for the sake of time so peter is led out by the angel are we together and the bible says the angel departed from him 11 now watch this when peter came to himself he said now i know that god has delivered me from herod and the expectation of the jews next verse when he considered the thing watch this now the Bible says he came to the house. They were praying that he would leave the prison and arrive home safely. Was that not the prayer? The Bible now says he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, 
where they were gathered together they were still praying now verse 13 peter knocked at the door of the gate i am the answer to what you have been praying the bible says a damn cell came to hack and call rhoda this is a tragedy i want you to avoid verse 14 when she knew it was peter's voice she opened not the gate for gladness but ran in and told